Okay, so this is part two. All right, so now you would have looked at your procedures, gotten your procedures together, and now you're making a data table. So what I've done is I've taken, um, basically, these sticks right here are all been soaked. There's a whole bunch of them soaked in solutions. And these are salt solutions, so they'll kind of have a little bit of crystal on them. And then what I've done is I have labeled, okay, each um, paper towel with two samples on each paper towel. Now, I've labeled them in the order that they are listed on your handout, okay? So right below the guiding question, it'll say materials. So I've listed all six plus barium chloride, okay, on these sheets. And then the very last two paper towels are unknown one and unknown two. So what you're going to do is you're going to make a table of the known samples. So when I stick my wood splint that's soaked in the chemical in the fire it's going to give off a characteristic light okay a color you will record that color then my helper mr sherrod and miss bunch are going to put the 3d glasses over the camera so you can see what it looks like when it's diffracted into a prism and then you can see the emission line spectrum do your best to see what lines you'll see okay you're not going to be able to record actual numbers i just want you to be able to see what um, the different colors that it breaks it up into into its emission line spectrum how you're going to identify the unknowns is by the color that's given off in the flame test okay so we're going to start off with the first one this is calcium chloride okay so now watch so we're going to do it without the glasses and then we're going to do it with the glasses Okay, so as you can see, this is calcium chloride. Look at the bright orange. Now, watch what happens with the glasses. Does it change? Okay, so that was calcium chloride. All right, now the next one is going to be copper chloride, CuCl2. There's your copper chloride. Now let's look at it with the glasses. Okay, so record your color for both with and without glasses. Okay, now the next one is going to be lithium chloride, LiCl2. Lithium chloride, LiCl2. Okay. Next is going to be KCl, which is potassium chloride. If I can get it on the tongue the right way, that'd be great. Now this one's a little bit hard to see because it's more of a purple. Next is sodium chloride, NaCl. I'm having trouble with my tongs. Next is strontium chloride, SrCl2. Next is barium chloride, BaCl2. Yeah. 
All right, now these are the important ones. So now you should have a data table that is built of all of your known substances and their colors. So now you're going to take the unknowns. Now, now be aware, there's probably more than one sample for each unknown. It's not going to be just one. Okay, so there's going to be more than one. So you're going to be looking for more than one color. All right. So this is unknown number one. This is unknown number two. So that is part two of the lab. Now, what you're gonna do after you've gotten your data table done, okay, let me get my camera, my light here, okay? You are gonna come up with, okay, there's a guiding question, your claim, your evidence, and your justification. So. Once your group has finished collecting and analyzing your data, you will need to develop an initial argument. Your argument must include a claim, which is your answer to the guiding question. Remember, the guiding question was, what are the identities of the unknown solutions? Okay? Now, your argument must also include evidence in support of your claim. The evidence is your analysis of the data and your interpretation of what the analysis means. Finally, you must include a justification of the evidence in your argument. You will therefore need to use a scientific concept or principle to explain why the evidence that you decided to use is relevant and important. Okay? You will not have to do the argumentation session as you guys are digital, so there won't be an opportunity for you to do the argumentation session. So you will skip that. Okay? So basically, what you're going to do is in your handout on your evidence, that's going to be your data table basically saying, well, I identified this as this color and this is this color. So therefore, when I looked at my unknowns, I was able to identify under these situations. In your justification piece, you can also say, well, there was a couple of them that looked very similar. And so you might have mislabeled them based on the fact that you couldn't tell any difference. Okay. So if you feel that way, you need to put that in your justification piece, okay? Now, so your handout that went along with this lab, you need to include your, your guiding question, your claim, your evidence, and your justification piece. That's what you're going to turn in for your 25 points for the lab grade. Now, for your lab report, if you flip your paper over, once you've completed your research, you will need to prepare an investigation report that consists of three sections that provide answers to the following questions. What question were you trying to answer and why? What did you do during the investigation and why did you conduct your investigation in this way? And what is your argument? Your report should answer these questions or two page, in two pages or less. Now, I gave you in the lab report area a paper that gave you sentence starters. You can use those sentence starters to help you fill out your lab report, okay? So you will insert your information where the lines are in those sentence starters, okay? And that will be turned in in a formal lab report. That is due on Friday, okay? So now, there's one more part of this video that's not gonna be incorporated in the lab, but we really wanted you to be able to see the different emission spectrums of known elements. So the next part of this is we're going to have a power supply and we're going to have some gas discharge tubes and we're going to flip them on and you'll get to see their characteristic color. But then we're going to take the 3D glasses and put them over the lens 
and then you can see exactly the emission spectrum of these particular ele known elements that we're going to tell you, okay? So I'll see you in a minute, but we're done with the actual lab report and the lab. I hope you enjoyed it.